from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 67. Now looking at this poster, can you tell what concept it illustrates? Well, the animal is called a porcupine, and the caption says that they have sharp hairs that warn enemies to stay away. Now, if you think the concept is animal defenses, you're right. But this also illustrates a physical adaptation this animal has. Now, this poster illustrates three animal adaptations and it provides them with defense. Now, if th what I'm saying there, if you look at the poison dark frog, it has brightly colored skin, warning that it uses poison. The caddy did, it blends with its leafy environment. This defense is known as camouflage. The armadillo has a hard shell, which provides uh, armor. When threatened, the armadillo rolls into a ball so the armor covers all exposed parts of its body. That action of rolling into a ball is an example of a behavior adaptation. So when you write your report on the animal you decide to research, you'll want to find and report on your animal's physical and behavior adaptations. Our last two episodes have focused on adaptations. Here's a quick review. The cheetah has long legs for running fast and a long, flat tail for balance during high-speed turns. Those are some of its physical adaptations. Cheetahs sneak up close to their prey before giving chase. That's a behavior adaptation. Now here's an animal loaded with adaptations. Beavers have sharp teeth for cutting down trees. They eat the inner bark of the trees but they do something more remarkable than that. Beavers carry branches in the water and use them to build dams. They dam a stream to make water back up behind the dam. They also build their lodges out of the branches. The water in this video is impounded by the beaver dam. In the middle distance, you can see the beaver lodge mounded up above the surface. Beavers make the entrance to their lodges under the water that they dam up. This provides protection from most predators. So beavers are basically engineers and construction workers. They have many physical adaptations that allow them to do those amazing things. And the things they do are behavior adaptations. Elephants have some notable adaptations, especially that long trunk. That can hold two gallons of water in that trunk, uh, which they can drink or give themselves a cooling shower. Those big flat ears are another adaptation for elephants, helping them cool their huge body and to warn away threats. Now watch this fish as it eats. You can spot some of the adaptations it has. Now I notice it has bright color, and I see how it utilizes its closely packed teeth to eat. I also noticed that it can swim sideways and even move backwards. Now we've enjoyed video of sea turtles in previous episodes. This sea turtle has some interesting adaptations. Instead of the clubby feet like turtles on land, sea turtles have flippers as their front feet. The sea turtle shell is flat, allowing it easier movement in the water. 
There's less resistance that way. Sea turtles are able to spend a great deal of time underwater before coming up to breathe air. Now these odd-looking hippopotami have the number of physical and behavior adaptations. Their bodies are designed to spend most of their time in water, which they do. Hippos come out at night to graze on land, but they get much of their food from underwater plants as well. Can you see the lions? Well, of course you can. But you can also see how they blend in with the dry grass they're passing through on their way to a hunt. Now, who can doubt that a shark is a well-equipped apex predator? Notice the smaller fish swimming with it. They clean the shark's spiky scales and get bits of the shark's meals. The shark refrains from eating these helpers. Check out this tropical lionfish. It has such overwhelming physical adaptations as you can hardly tell it's a fish. All those appendages confuse predators as well. They also make it look bigger, and a predator that does attack may end up with something other than the fish's body. This spotted stingray has an obvious adaptation. It keeps it safe from most predators. That long stinger can produce a nasty wound and has even been known to kill. Their behavior of burrowing themselves in the sand uh, and the sea bottom brings them success in ambushing prey. Now this red fox has some adaptations worth noting. That bushy tail provides warmth when it curls up to sleep in a cold environment. The long legs allow foxes to walk in fairly steep snow, keeping its body core above the snow. And they can use those um, to detect, they, they can detect, that's using their ears, detect small rodents moving underneath the snow. Those long legs allow the fox to spring up in the air and come down with forepaws on the rodent, giving it a midwinter meal. Now these zebra stripes serve to confuse predators, especially when a herd of zebras are moving. Zebras have a defense, uh, defensive social structure. When the stallion of the group protects the other members, delivering a fatal kick to would-be predators that get too close to the herd. It seems that once you become aware of adaptations that animals have, you start to see them everywhere. It's a bit like words that you become aware of in your target language. A word seems new because it's new to you, but then you start seeing it in many things that you read or hear, and that's uh, how that happens and what people say. So this edition of Zoo Books uh, will help you become more aware of an animal adaptation. It's the Animal Wonders edition. And uh, I'll do a quick review. So let's see what's inside of this edition. This page shows a number of adaptations and what those adaptations do for the animals that possess them. Do you see the bird walking on the floating leaf? Don't try that at home. In areas prone to floods, the species of ants link their legs together to form a floating ball. The ball slowly spins, allowing all the ants a chance to be on top to breathe. It was absolutely amazing when I learned about the adaptation of this frog. It can survive being frozen during the winter and come out alive when the weather warms up. Seems it has some kind of natural antifreeze in its blood. The physical adaptation of this chameleon is a bit startling. Its sticky tongue is longer than its body, allowing it to snatch insects from quite a distance. Now, if you're interested in behavior adaptations, ZooBooks has an edition for this as well. It's entitled Animal Champions. In this edition, you get to see animals that are best at their behaviors. On this page, I see one of my favorite wild birds, the peregrine uh, falcon. It dives great distances to catch its prey in the air, diving over 200 miles an hour. This wandering albatross has the longest wingspan of all the birds. Now, how does that, ad ad that adaptation help it? These birds fly great distances over the ocean. The long wings catch the wind and allow them to spend most of their lives aloft without needing to rest. 
Zoo books are a great source of learning about adaptations and other information you'll need for your report. You're likely to find them at your local library, including your school library if you're still in school. Zoo, bro zoo books are also available by subscription. You can go to zoobooks.com. I'll have that link on my website, letscreate.org. Just navigate to the episode 67 page and look for it there. This ends segment one of episode 67.